Hello, and welcome to Answer Everywhere, the only show created entirely by aliens from the future to try and understand your human source code. Today we're taking a look at Argo, uh, mainly Argo CD, possibly also Argo workflows, depending on what we see. If you haven't seen my uh, Kubernetes video, you should go back and watch that. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the comment for the show. Uh, in that video, I talked about how Kubernetes provides most of the, possibly maybe like 90% or 80% of the hard stuff that you need to get right in order to have a really good uh, CI or CD system. And in fact, Google published a paper about their own internal um, continuous delivery system, which is called, um, uh, the, the paper is called like ProdSpec and annealing. Annealing is the, the system and ProdSpec is, is, is the language that's used to, to write the assets. Um, and, and in that paper, they talk about how uh, Kubernetes and annealing are very similar. Um, and the, they, they kind of flesh out that a little bit and talk about how like ProdSpec assets are similar to uh, Kubernetes CRDs or uh, custom resource definitions. And they compare both to, I think also Terraform comes up. So there's this kind of idea that they, you know, Kubernetes has this control loopy thing that uh, is designed to make sure that the, the intended state of the universe matches the actual state of the universe. And it does that um, via a, a bunch of stuff that we talked about in that video. So given that, it's unsurprising that there are a bunch of uh, tools around the Kubernetes environment that are designed to make Kubernetes nicer to work with in order to perform to, to provide a, a continuous delivery and or continuous integration and or like uh, uh, workflow kind of flows. Um, I'm a little bit familiar with Argo CD. I evaluated it um, at one point for a project where I needed to make kind of like N different um, continuous delivery systems that all were um, uh, that all were under the control of, of different users um, who possibly didn't trust each other, but where there needed to be some sense that they were uh, like isomorphic, <laughs> maybe is a way to describe it, that they were, uh, they all had the same shape but were customizable in a kind of declarative way. Um, and Argo CD, I thought would, would work pretty well for that. I ended up not going with it because it turned out that um, we already had another solution that was um, that that was kind of baked into the into the cloud we were using. So, um, but since then, I've kind of had my eye on Argo and, and other things in this space. And now I'm in the position where I'm building some stuff. I would like to use Kubernetes uh, because I know it well enough and I want a simple CI system mainly, but also I know in the future I'll need continuous delivery. And I'm just sort of evaluating what's out there and kind of looking for the one that uh, feels most right. Um, and in terms of my criteria and I guess what I'm going to look for are uh, I try to avoid projects that try to do all of the things. Like it sometimes seems like you get a project and they want to capture you into an ecosystem um, and by like providing your login infrastructure and they try to um, have a, a bunch of tooling that's kind of designed to be like a nice, a nice walled garden. And then if you want to integrate if you want to kind of step outside the tooling, things get harder. Um, and then there are other projects in this space that seem like it's basically the simplest thing that you would put together in a few hours if you needed to build a CI or CD system on Kubernetes, but with actual like engineering experts kind of like figuring out how to do things robustly, etc. And those projects tend to be more bare bones, um, but they tend not to like sprawl out into other areas of the, um, of the design space. So that's, that's just kind of the thing that I have in mind. I don't know enough about this stuff to know what I expect from Argo CD or, um, tomorrow I'm doing flux and the day after that I'm doing tecton. And I think they're all kind of in different 
a little bit different points in the design space. Um, Argo CD, I think, is is more of a like fully all batteries included sort of approach. In fact, we get an animated um, image of some sort of, I guess this is their, their dashboard. And it will tell you things like whether it's synced. I'm not sure what synced uh, means here in this case, but um, these are presumably assets that depend on other assets. And so it's, um, it says it's declarative and it uses Git ops. So what does that mean? To unravel that a little bit, declarative is just, you know, Kubernetes is declarative. So I, I assume that what these systems are doing ultimately is implementing um, custom resource definitions in Kubernetes, which is, uh, you know, in Kubernetes, it's a thing that uh, has control loops. And what is it controlling? Well, it's controlling resources. And if your resources aren't the ones that are already built in, you can extend the ability of Kubernetes, Kubernetes to do stuff so by adding custom resources. And you do that with custom resource definitions. So this is a thing that you're going to like Quebec will apply and will create new resources and also add controllers and possibly operators and all of the uh, Kubernetes stuff. And then GitOps um, essentially means, or the, the way I'm going to interpret it is that there is some Git repo that stores the state of the system. And this Git repo is basically being used as essentially like a, a hash tree or a, or a blockchain, if you want to use that analogy, of um, all of the stuff that describes the state of your cluster. So um, I'm not sure exactly you know, what sorts of things Argo is capable of continuously delivering, but let's assume that one of the things it's capable of doing is making sure that um, your application, uh, what, let's say you make some, you have some application backend. Um, you know, whenever you update it, and you want to push that update out to your fleet of machines, you would, um, you would somehow indicate that intent by by creating a Git commit that changes the identifier for your your binary to whatever maybe like some Docker container, and when you commit that to Git, Argo will presumably see that commit, um, notice that the label is different and possibly later than than previous uh, than, the, than the binaries that are running, and take some action to to rectify things by pushing out the new binary. So that's the sort of thing that I think that I believe it's doing, but we will see as we look in. Okay, so let's dig in. I have. Um, I have Emacs open. I might just skip. I'm feeling that I that maybe I'll just skip GitHub and look at Emacs. Um, I'm not sure even really what I want most to see. I would like to see some of how they do the they define the custom resource definitions. Um, but I'm sure there's other interesting stuff as well. So let's look in. I guess controller. Whoops. Hey, now. <laughs> I've, done, I've done something terrible. I've uh, somehow marked everything in God mode. Let's undo this. Let's get out of God mode because I don't need it in, in dirt red mode. I thought I turned that off. Okay. So we're going to mark controller. Um, should we look at examples? It might be worth looking at examples, but I'm not sure. Comp server might be useful. Application set is probably useful. Common, I'm going to guess, is hack. Who knows? I'll ignore hack. And then package. I guess I do want to see UI. Package might be the real root, right? Isn't that it? Okay, so we give API client APIs and client. Maybe we'll look at APIs. API rules and application. Register.go. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what in here is really interesting. Maybe I'll mark a random one. Generated pro proto repository type. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to ignore it. What about API rules? Okay. So, what about a repo server? I'll ignore that. Let's check out common. Common just says common version. What is common? 
default service addresses and URLs of Argo CD internal services. So we've got some internal services and presumably these are going to show up as like Kubernetes service objects. And they have ports and whatnots and they need to communicate with them. So we've got things like TLS config, SSH config, some enum security, security severity logging. Okay. So it might, you, somehow in the logging, you can tell something that there's a security critical thing with jig. Okay. So that's not so important. Um, let's look at application set. Cause we have things like controllers, generators, services, utils, and webhook. So web, I am going to need webhook. Um, I'm planning to use Garrett for the, um, for code review. And Garrett is, will also store Git stuff. So I guess I might as well, for simplicity, just use that as my Git server as well. And so when I commit something to Garrett, I want to kick off, um, kick off a pipeline. And the standard way to do that, I think would be through a webhook. So what is webhook.go? We just get one little file and some Git stuff. And we have functions like rep. Let's see if we can just look at the functions parse revision is allowed GitLab pool request action and GitHub pool request action. So there seems to be tight integration with GitLab and GitHub. Hub, GitHub, GitHub might be nice. And we have new webhook handler. This is the only really webhook thing, webhooking thingy. There's a, here's a function that returns a webhook handler. Should refresh merge generator. Okay, so some webhook stuff. I'm not quite sure I see exactly how they've laid it out, but let's look at new webhook handler. I'm gonna take a namespace, a settings manager, and a client, and some generators, which are maps from strings to generators. And presumably, it's only gonna handle stuff on the namespace. Let's look at the webhook handler object. Yeah, we could string. Can we do this? How about handle event? Handle event returns a webhook handler. I think I want something that takes a webhook handler. Right? I'm not sure. Let's look at handle event. Do I have tags? I should have an LS, uh, LSP server. Why are you asking for tags? Okay. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to see if, if it was restricting to namespace, but that's not obvious what it's doing, but that's fine. So here's, we have application set controller, cluster event handler, and requeue after test. So let's look at um, application set controller. Rather than importing the whole Argo CD notifications controller, just copying the const here. So we have some const stuff. Okay, so we have an application set reconciler. What is an application set? I'm not sure. Is this a an Argo CD thing? Application set. I'm guessing it's an Argo CD thing. Or maybe not. Getting started with application sets, the GitOps philosophy. An Argo CD application is a representation of a collection of Kubernetes native manifests, usually YAML, that make up all the pieces of your applications. Okay, so if this is to believe this, if if this is to be believed, then an application is a collection of Kubernetes native manifests. So what does Kubernetes native mean? It's, it means like if it's not going to know about custom resource definitions from some other um, project. And you can't presumably put Argo stuff in an application. It's going to be things like pods, services, and ingresses, and those sorts of things. That's how I will interpret it. Um, and then we have a reconciler, which will hold a client which makes sense. A client for what? I don't know. Probably the Kubernetes API, I guess. Unless everything goes through the Argo API as well. Um, a, sch a scheme 
a recorder, which I guess is going to record events given the type. Generators, I don't know what they're going to generate, but they're going to generate something. Um, an Argo DB, who knows, maybe they store um, stuff in a database. Although, if they were cool like Garrett, they would just use Git as the database. So Argo app client set, app client set. Not quite sure what that would be. A cube client set, some policy, which seems to be about synchronization policy. Whether to enable policy override. I render some a Argo CD namespace, which I'm guessing is the namespace that you've deployed Argo CD stuff in. Um, application set namespaces, which is potentially things that uh, if an application set is things like pods and ingresses, this is maybe a list of strings of everything um, this reconciler is allowed to to manipulate. And you would need to set up, um, you know, um, access control policies to allow that, I assume. Whether to enable progressive syncs. I don't know what progressive means. Maybe it means um, like incremental. And then some root CA path, I guess, so that you need a certificate authority. And then we have this reconcile function. And reconcile is just going to take a context and a request. And it's going to return an application set reconciler. Which is a little bit surprising that that's what it's returning. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting this with Go. This is implementing. <laughs> this is the, this In Go, this is the thing that it's implementing, right? So it's going to implement... It's got this reconcile function, and it's, what it's going to return is a pair of results and error, which which makes more sense. Hello, 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 QSM, welcome back. Yeah, Go is good. Are you a Go fan? All right. Um, okay, so we've got this application set variable. Whether we've generated parameters is false. We're going to call get on R. What is R? I don't know. That's us. R is is basically us, this thing that we're extending. And where are the functions for R? I feel like I'm missing something here because the file is write protected. I'm not trying to write to the file. I'm going on Emacs. And now Emacs is frozen. I think probably trying to communicate to um, to the LSP server. Okay, so we have we have this reader interface that has get with a context, an object key, and an object. Get retrieves an object for the given object key from the Kubernetes cluster. Object may be a struct pointer so that object can be updated with response. So it must be a struct. Huh. So this is kind of funny. It's a um, I guess object is essentially an out parameter, and we're returning one one thing. Seems a little bit ungo like. And then we have list. Returns a list of objects for a given namespace on a successful call. Items field in the list will be populated. Okay, so again, here the second parameter is the out parameter, I guess, and list options is maybe an in parameter. And then we also have delete and create, which I guess are going to be similar. This is from the Kubernetes authors. Is this part of Kubernetes? I think this is part of Kubernetes proper. Controller runtime. Maybe that's why the LSP implementation had to think a little bit. Okay, so um, this reconciler is going to call get, and the application name set info. Sorry, application set info um, is the out parameter, right? So we should see that being updated. And what we're going to do is check some error, which I'm going to ignore, and return control result. Where's control? I don't know. Uh, and oh, sorry, this is still the error. <laughs> this is still the error. Okay, never mind. Um, so uh, I'll ignore that error and do not attempt further reconcile the application set if it's being deleted. So if it's deleted, we stop trying to reconcile it. We might log some stuff, and then we're going to get the desired applications in the application set reason and an error. And it's going to be the main list of all applications from all generators in this app set. Cool. QSM says they've been doing some Go lately. Yeah, you know what? I um, when I wrote when I was doing Go, I did not enjoy it. 
I've been thinking more about it and and it seems like it seems like there are some things where go might be um the right balance of like kind of not quite a scripting language but it it feels a little bit scripty and um if you're <laughs> Like if you're, I was thinking like, how would you implement something like Argo CD or Flux? And, um, I think Go makes a lot of sense because you get that. That's what all the Kubernetes stuff is, is written in. And you get to basically copy their style. And, um, you're like basically just creating YAML all the time. And if you're going to do that, I think that Go makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm sure that's, uh, there's a, uh, Go is very prominent in, um, a lot of the distributed systems, kind of Kubernetes, uh, RPC kind of space. All right, um, so we've got this application set status condition. So when we get a response from generate applications, which is passing in the application set info, we're gonna set the status, I guess, and say that we've generated parameters and we will try to validate the applications and Assuming that goes well, then we've got some map that we're going to create a name to app collection of applications for this application set. We've got an app sync map, which tracks which apps will be synced during the reconciliation. And then we might um, enable progressive syncs. I'm not sure about that. Argo also has like a rollouts um, repo. The way that Argo has laid out their repos is like basically every kind of feature is its own Git repository. So one of them is called rollouts, which I think is about things like progressive rollouts. I don't know if that's the same as progressive syncs or what, but um, for now, I'm going to ignore that as an unnecessary complication. Um, we're going to iterate over the desired applications, look for validation errors, and, those, and uh, the valid apps will just be the ones that don't have any validation errors. Um, then we'll check if we found any uh, val uh, validation errors. We'll check more about progressive sync. And then what is this thing? We're looking at the def if the default policy, I guess, allows update. Then we're going to call create or update in cluster with the valid apt in the application set. And uh, hopefully not have errors. Or rather, if we don't have errors, then we do what? We set the status condition. Otherwise, I guess we don't allow update on the default policy, in which case we will create in cluster rather than create or update in cluster and basically do the same thing we did above. And if we're allowed to delete, then we'll call delete in cluster. And if refresh is required, then we'll delete the annotation, I guess, that tells us to refresh it and then update it. Shouldn't we delete the annotation after, uh, after we successfully update it? Am I misunderstanding what's going on? I'm not sure. seems like, you know, if your application like, crashes here, then you said that, uh, you basically promised to have refreshed it, but not actually done it. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm misreading what's going on. And then we might requeue some stuff, get min requeue after. So the application set info might say how often you have to, to, to check to refresh stuff, I guess. And, that, and maybe we're requeuing that. I don't know. More checking on validation errors, et cetera. Okay. I think this is probably um, maybe the heart of Argo CD. We rarely get to the heart so quickly. So I'm, I'm, that makes me think that we're, we're, I'm probably wrong about that. But this looks pretty close to a main um, control loop thingy and it's controlling the application set, which is the, the presumably the, the main thing you want out of a CD system, right? Um, I did want to see generate applications. Um, and where are we now? Application set controller. Okay. So here's the application set controller and we are going to generate applications. So we've got some generators. I still don't know what generators are. But that's okay. Uh, I'll look them up in a minute. And we're going to call transform with the generators. 
and get a T, maybe a transform. And if error is not nil, we will what? We'll look at first error, whatever first error is, and check that it's not nil. And then we're going to range, we're going to iterate over T, which I guess is some sort of collection, and then get the temp application, maybe template. Okay, so we'll get a template to be applied, maybe. Check the labels, um, and presumably, eventually, we're going to render the templates. Here we go, render template params. So we've got some template. Hmm. We're going to render um, render the templates basically with the data that's been passed in. And this is presumably where things happen. Like you know, you've pushed a new uh, YAML that says use um, doc container foobar from August eighth. Whereas before you were using one from August 1st, let's say. And so it's going to, I'm guessing that this is where it happens that it like, you know, renders the new template that says August 8th. And it's going to build, build that thing up. And then it's going to return uh, the stuff. But what, what's application set reason? reason? Let's see if we can highlight. Okay, so it's just set to application set reason render template params. If first error is nil. And that is just a string that says render template. Wait, what? Rem render template params error. Okay. So first I see, I see. So first error, I guess is going to be the, if you get multiple errors, they're going to report the first one maybe. Um, and so if we're here, error is not nil, then we're, if first error is nil, then we're going to take over the first error and say that it's this, that we failed to render the template, I think is what's going on. Okay. And so we're returning the first error, what the reason for the first error is and the result, which is, uh, I'm not sure. Do they delete the template if it doesn't render or do they just return the par the partially rendered template stuff? I'm not sure. It looks like they just append. And if there's an error, nobody's like resetting the, the partially uh, templated stuff, but it's also not appended. So anything that has an error doesn't get added to res, but I guess anything that succeeded does presumably. Okay, so what does transform do? And what is a generator? So generator, here's the application set spec, which I don't think we've seen. It's got a go template, which is a bool. What? Is that right? It's got generators, which are application set generators. We've got a whole list of them. A template, sync policy, a strategy, Preserves fields, go template options, and apply nested selectors. All right, so I want to know what a generator is. Let's look at application set generators. It represents a generator at the top level of an application set. All right, so it's got its list generators, cluster generators, git generators, SCMP provider generators, duct type generators, pool request generators, matrix generators, and merge generators. What on earth? So what is this SCMP? Let's look up SCMP. I feel like I should know that. Uh, computers. Hello, Capkin. Sir, <laughs> four. Not found. SC slash MP. It's a direct descendant of PACE. A single board microcomputer. So let's look at SCMP right here. That scrapes SMC mass API to find candidate repos. Hmm. Source control something or Bitbucket. 
I'm, I'm guessing that, so this seems SCM mass. So it says, this is the Argo, read the docs. It says the pull request generator uses the API of an SCM ass provider, source control, something as a service, source control mania, supply chain management as a service. Okay. Let's consider, let's consider GitHub a supply chain manager as a service. Okay, so we're going to imagine these as supply, <laughs> source code supply chains. Um, and I'm not sure if this is a common abbreviation or if this is just something that Argo is doing. So source control mass is basically things, you know, software forges or, or source control forges. And they support GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, GitT, Azure DevOps. Uh, some filters for a repo, clone protocol, which I guess is usually Git, but I guess... Does Bitbucket support only Git? I'm not sure. Default is provider specific, but SSH is possible. Okay, so maybe the protocol is just um, like whether to use SSH or, or something else. It's just a string. Okay, cool. All right, so that's... Wait a minute. I still don't think I saw what a, a generator really was. Okay, so a generator defines the interface implemented by all application set generators, okay? Generate params interprets the application sets and generates all relevant parameters for the application template. Okay, so generate params is, a, I guess, a function. You pass it an app set generator and some info, and it's going to return a map from string to interface, which is basically like, um, I think the empty interface in Go is essentially any type because anything will uh, match it and an error. So it's a, basically an unconstrained map, key, an unconstrained key value store, unconstrained on the, on the value, I think. And what is it going to do? Well, it's going to take whatever the application set generator is in the application set info and generate the relevant parameters for the application template. The expected desired list of parameters is returned. It then will re be rendered and reconciled against the current state. But I don't think that this function in particular renders it because we saw somewhere else that, that, that it was being rendered. So this should just generate the parameters. And get requeue after is the generator can controller the next reconciled loop. Is the generator can controller? I'm not sure what that sentence means, but in case there is more than one generator, the time will be the minimum of the times. In case no requeue is empty, it will be ignored. I'm not really sure. Something about you might have multiple competing things, and we have some um, some way to decide who gets to go. And I don't know, really know what we're requeuing or what. Maybe I guess. Um, reserving a spot for the next go around on the on the reconcile loop, and then we've got a get template which returns the inline template from the spec if there is any. So you can get the template. I guess that's like underlying the generator. Cool. And then what about transform? Okay, transform a spec generator to a list of param sets and templates. So you give it an application set generator, which the generator is the thing that we saw before. I, presumably this one is um, specialized to application sets. You give it a list of all generators, whatever that means for some value of all, which is a map from strings to generators and a base template. And the base template has the type of the application set template. And we're gonna give it an app set and some gen params and we're going to return a transform result. So this kind of has the flavor of we're um, we're kind of diffing um, the the generator with some other uh, template information. We're like changing it, but not starting from scratch. We're just kind of changing it in a minimal way. This is a custom version of the label selector as selector that is in the kubernetes.io API machinery. Okay, so we've got some selector thing, a transform result. We're going to call get all relevant generators with the requested with the requested generator on all generators. 
Okay, so we're going to range, we're going to iterate over the generators, merge some stuff, and do what? Temp interpolated generator. We'll call interpolate. Okay, so th this seems to be the thing that I thought it was. So we've got templates. We're fiddling around. With, fiddling around with YAML is basically what I think we're doing. It's not technically YAML, it's technically ghost structs or whatever, but we all know it's really YAML. All right. So I feel like we've basically seen the heart of Argo CD. Should we look at examples? Kubernetes RBAC. Hmm. I think RBAC is hard enough to reason about that. I don't want that to be the example we look at. Let's look at UI. So we should have some dashboard. And I just kind of want to know what the UI is written in. How about that? TS config, probably TypeScript. We have app and assets. Assets should be like fixed assets. App, we have application. Let's look at app.tsx. Do I not have TypeScript mode? TSX is TypeScript, maybe? Is that right? Will it work? It <laughs> seems to like that. Okay. What do we have? Is this React? This looks like React. We've got some routes. You can log in, applications, settings, etc. Okay. And nav items. This was the sort of thing you would expect to be in a uh, top level React app. We've got some SSO stuff. I'm not sure how they implement SSO. And yeah, this is all just React. I don't think there's anything I really need to. Here are the components. Application pod view. Create panel condition details, full screen logs, sync panel, status summary, filter. How about, I don't know what would be an interesting thing to look at. How about um, details? No, resource events, you try. Is there like a tree sort of view? Summary. What about this? When we went to the Argo things, there's the screen, right? Summer, this applications slash something or other. Application details tree. Let's see if you can find that string. Get page title. So here's application details. And is there anything interesting you want to look for? Let's look at this thing again. Okay, so these should all be just standard buttony, thinky things. This has to be some sort of um, canvas thing, right? With graph stuff in it. Let's see if we can find the canvas. I don't know anything about front end, by the way. I'm just guessing. Do we have a graph? Filtered graph? Do we have, yeah, okay. So application detail state has things like page. I don't know what page is going to be. Revision, grouped resources, sliding panel page, filtered graph. So I guess the graph can be filtered. Maybe we're just only looking at a subset, whether the nodes are collapsed and extensions. Let's look at um, collapsed nodes. No references found. And I don't have tags for JavaScript and I don't have a um, LSP server for Java for, for, for TypeScript. I mean, not JavaScript. Okay. All right. So somehow it's rendering all this stuff. Maybe we can look in the imports to see if it's importing anything. Class names, React DOM, models, delay filter, data loader. Um, as a non... TypeScript non-React person. I don't think I don't see anything that's obviously doing the um, the drawingy canvasy stuff, but maybe you do. And uh, I'm just going to ignore the rest of it. So I feel like I feel like I have a good sense of what Argo CD is up to. Let's take a quick look at Argo workflows. Again, we have API command community config dev. Do we think dev is interesting? Nix. 
Wow. Did Argo CD have Nyx? We have Unix. Yeah, it seems like Argo, maybe the Argo workflows people like Nix, but the Argo CD people don't. Hack? I still don't know what this is. This is like shell scripts. Shell script hacks. Server. So in workflows, we have a server. Uh, is this the same as the front end? API server. And this is in Go. Cluster workflow template. So workflows is maybe a little bit um, more challenging because we should have things like um, something's got to manage all the, the dependencies among the workflows and produce some sort of DAG. And um, maybe that's the sort of stuff that we have here. I'm not sure. We have events, cron workflow, cluster workflow template, info, static types, utils. How about workflow? Workflow server.go. And I think LSP has to think because I may not have opened a a file from here before. Invalid settings. Don't tell me these things. Okay, so here's workflow server. Just jumping around. And it's got functions like submit workflow. That's good. All right, what is submit workflow going to do? Um, I guess one thing is I'm curious about, is it going to like save it? Is everything in a, um, in a CRD or is it going to save it to like a separate database? So a CRD would be, would mean essentially the database that persists your intent to, for some sort of workflow is just at CD. Um, but maybe they're saving it in like a different kind of database for, for funsies. Apply, submit ops to status area, workflow, template, interface, more templating, more YAML. Um, we're going to return some workflows and convert cron workflow to workflow. So I guess a cron workflow is just a nice interface to a general workflow and it gets converted um, to the more general workflow object. Validate workflow generator, etc. What is validate going to do? Oh, you, um, I guess you pass it in some validate options, right? Accepts work and performs validation against it. And I'm just going to look quick. This is some template stuff. It's got some conditions, I guess. If we are linting, we don't care if spec arguments parameters XXS doesn't have an explicit value. So it's going to, you know, I guess, check for valid YAML and maybe other stuff. What else do we see? So let's get out of server. Let's look in persist. That'll tell us about database stuff, right? SQL DB. SQL, right? Not SQL Lite. Uh, SQL DB now go. Get table name. Postgres or MySQL. And that's about it. Okay, so it seems to be storing stuff in Postgres or MySQL, which seems a little bit overkill. Let's see if we can find out information about it. If you want to keep completed workflows for a long time, you can use the workflow archive. Okay, so you can use the workflow archive, but do you need, um, is it just for archives? Does Argo workflows need a database? It seems, I guess, just to be for the archive, which is reasonable. Okay. Very good. What else do we have? Um, errors is not so interesting. Let's look in API. That's like Swagger and JSON schema. Examples, hack, manifests, manifests, base, CRDs. Should we look at full or minimal? Let's look at minimal. Okay, so here we have some CRDs. Let's look at workflows.yaml. 
So we have a custom resource definition. His name is workflows. And I, you know, I don't know how custom resource definitions work. So you give it some spec. And uh, I'm assuming this is basically the, the, the definition, right? Um, we've got a, a group and it's got names. The kind of thing it is, is a workflow. The list kind is workflow list. Or maybe, um, yeah, okay. This is setting the, setting the names, I guess, in a Kubernetes understandable way. It's namespace scoped. And we've got versions, which has additional printer columns, such as, the, okay, the status of the workflow, when the workflow was started. So I guess um, this is telling the, the maybe like the cubectal command and other clients to print extra stuff when you when you print stuff related to this um, CRD maybe. And some properties like API version, which is a string. And there's really not much, much to it, I guess. What if we look at the full one? The full one much larger? It's not that much larger. We've got some semaphores, a semaphore, okay. Synchronization properties. It's kind of wild. I didn't know that um, things like synchronization and semaphores were, were part of the, the like the YAML definition of a an object. I don't know how to jump to the top of YAML. I'm sure there's a way that Emacs will let me do it, but I don't know enough about YAML mode. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is an open API schema. Well, I don't I don't care about open API. Okay, and then we have some manifest for the Argo server. And I guess that this is going to be like, you need to, if you're gonna run Argo workflows, you need to run the server. And this is probably a deployment for the server. So let's just double check that. Yeah, so we're gonna get this image off of K or key. I can't remember if it's pronounced key or K, which I think is like the Red Hat thing. I guess they don't like docker.io. Let's go to k.i key. Okay. Let's first of all, let's get this right. Key. Or K. Or Quay. A wharf or reinforced bank for the loading or unloading of ships or boats. Everything has to be named after boats in Kubernetes. Kubernetes is what the Greek word for navigator or something like ship navigator. Same root as cybernetics, right? Might as well look this up while we're on the dictionary. Cybernetics is the theoretical study of communication and control processes in biological, mechanical, and electronic systems, especially the comparison of these processes in biological and artificial sy systems. From Kubernetes, governor. From Kubernon to govern. Oh, it's related to government. So why is it always a ship? Okay. All right. So it's also governor in the sense of like a um, steam engine governor, I guess. Red Hat. So K is Red Hat. Is that what I said? I said something like Red Hat, I think. Okay. So this is a deployment. <laughs> All of that is by way of saying this is just some deployment for running a particular um, like uh, Docker container. I'm calling them Docker containers. They are, of course, um, uh, whatever the container initiative thing, I think they're all um, all implementations of the same kind of standard, spec standard now. And we have a UI, which is presumably, again, written in TypeScript with React. And let's take a look at this. Okay. So there's continuity there. And then um, can we see more about the controller? I'm not sure. So I think I'm, I think I'm basically satisfied that I have a, a sense of what's up going on with Argo. Um, before I go though, I want to think if I have any big open questions. So for the continuous delivery stuff, I, like I said at the beginning, there's not a whole lot you have to do there because what's going to happen is once you tell Kubernetes that you need to um, like bump some version number, the standard Kubernetes pod stuff is going to take care of 
making that rollout happen. And um, so where might be some of the complexity there? Well, you don't want to roll out all of your, all of your stuff at once, even within a single cu cluster necessarily. Um, so you may want to do something like a logically striped deployment. You might want to um, uh, have like a, like a, let's say like a red green deployment, red blue deployment. I don't know what people call it, but let's say that like, you know, some percentage of your pods are going to um, keep the old binary. Some smaller percentage are going to try the new binary. And when um, you, you have some metrics or statistics that you're going to uh, collect and make sure that like, you know, requests don't fail all of a sudden on the new binary that, that succeeded on the old binary. And you'll probably do some sort of statistical test to make sure that, you know, statistically the metrics from the new one are the way we want them to be. Either they're the same or they're better. And then once we get confidence of that, we'll roll it out more to the fleet. Um, and then once we get confidence that, that, that you know, since we rolled it out more, there's still no big problems, then we'll continue rolling out until, until we get to the rest of the fleet. There is presumably some way to do that in Argo. Um, certainly that's the sort of thing that I imagine Argo rollouts will handle. But I think that once we see how, um, once we see what the primitives are, a lot of that kind of stuff is, um, we can sort of see how, <laughs> see how it's going to go, right? So um, the Argo is basically involved in the manipulation of YAML from templates. And it's going to like have things like wait until the statistics are right. And then it's going to change the YAML template some more and commit them is the sort of thing I, I expect it to do. Um, and so I don't think that, at least personally, I'm going to get much out of like digging more deep into the the more advanced features now that I kind of just see how how they're thinking about doing the basic stuff. But maybe um, before I go, let's take a quick look at some of the other projects that caught my eye, but I didn't think I would really have time to look at. I guess I'll look at Argo rollouts. There's this GitOps engine. I don't really know what that could be. Argo events. I guess they're trying to do some sort of event or, or message broker type thing. And then Argo UI which says it's shared React component. So these should be things that all of the different projects use. So what is the what is the premise of rollouts here? Machine learning. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on workflows. So workflows includes things like machine learning. And I had forgotten that. Is there anything to see there, though? Let's do a grep for learning. Machine learning pipeline. Huge learning curve to tap into Nix functionality. <laughs> OK. Uh, use cases, machine learning, and we don't really get like a, doesn't seem like we get like a CRD or anything. Um, we can try grabbing for AI. And I'm getting, a, oh no, it doesn't like that. Okay. Two, uh, maybe AI is a, a space before it. Yeah, not much here. And then the last thing I'll do is I didn't do a case insensitive search for machine learning. Let's try that just to see if I missed anything. Yeah. I don't think that there's really anything. Maybe GPU. So here's an example where they're, they're presumably asking for some sort of GPU resource. So there's some toleration that says that they want, I guess, an NVIDIA.com GPU to exist. And if it does, or maybe if it doesn't, <laughs> they're gonna, whether or not it exists, either they're going to schedule it or not schedule it, basically. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but hello. You're from Indonesia. Welcome. How are things in Indonesia? Is anyone here on the chat from the US? Out of curiosity. Uh, all right. So I guess there's nothing too much I want to see in workflows. So let's close this. So let's get rollouts just very quickly. 
Argo Rollouts is a Kubernetes controller and a set of CRDs which provide advanced deployment capabilities such as blue-green, canary, canary, canary analysis, experimentation, and progressive delivery features to Kubernetes. Okay, so here's the stuff that I was just talking about. You could have like a blue-green deployment. Um, and uh, the statistic stuff I was talking about, that's canary and canary analysis, experimentation. Okay, so this stuff is not in the Argo CD repo, which is where we, where we were looking. So it's not surprising that I didn't really see anything related to it. But this should be, I, I would say for me, uh, knowing, what, knowing what we know and knowing just a little bit about statistics, this sort of thing should now be relatively straightforward with the caveat that um, there are lots of ways, I think, to do it incorrectly. So if you have a project like this, you want it implemented by people who have um, seen how these systems fail and use best practices, essentially. And so I assume that they I assume that they are taking that approach. Um, but from an engineering perspective, there's not like necessarily like cool algorithms or like really cool code that's going to um, really blow our mind. It's going to be a lot of just like fiddly bits and making sure that you don't make <laughs> don't make mistakes is, is how I'm going to imagine this uh, this repo looks like. And then Argo events is an event driven workflow automation framework for Kubernetes. It allows you to trigger 10 different actions such as the creation of Kubernetes objects, invoke workflows, or serverless workflows on over 20 different events, such as Webhook, S3 Drop, Cron Scheduler, and, uh, and messaging queues. For example, Kafka, GCP PubSub, SNS, and SQS. Okay. All that is fine and all that is good. I don't feel like I need it, but you might need it. Um, and maybe one other question I had is like, will it, will it like terraform up my situation. So like, let's say that I wanted to create um, GCP or AWS or Azure VMs as part of my cluster. Will it deploy um, like VMs or maybe even more boldly, will it de deploy new nodes for the existing cluster? And I think that it will not because what I saw in the docs was that an application set is necessarily um, a bunch of Kubernetes primitives and there are no primitives for things like uh, AWS VMs but I will maybe they have a project to do that sort of thing will um, uh, can Argo CD deploy AWS VMs no nope, not VMs yeah VMs yeah connecting AD AWS managed services to your Argo CD pipeline How about just deploy VMs? Let's try Google. Argo CD can connect to other Tanzu Kubernetes, Kubernetes clusters. I don't know what that means. To deploy VMs. I'm guessing they can't. Hello, Chang Lian. Welcome. Okay, so is there any vision, blah, 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 that will let me do this? I have a self-hosted on my... Uh, as far as I understand, fleet could have uh, have been included to harvest our code base. Could Argo see? Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. So what if I just look up um, the deploy VMs with Kubernetes CRDs? I think there are projects to do this. Virtual machine provisioning via Kubernetes with VMware. All right. So maybe this is not so important. But um, I'm sure it must be doable. I feel like I've seen an example of Spinnaker. Will Spinnaker do it? No, I don't think so. Let me try asking Bard. So this, I'll say, is there um, is there an open source solution that lets me provision cloud VMs? For example, on AWS or GCP, using Kubernetes CRDs. I don't know when Bard was updated. You can't assist with that. All right, well, I'm glad you know your limitations. 
let's ask ChatGPT. So ChatGPT will probably give me an answer, but is going to be outdated, I think, because I'm using GPT-3. September 2021, Kubevert cluster API. I think Kubevert is for like managing um, managing uh, like KVM containers using Kubernetes, like on on the existing machine as opposed to cloud resources. Cluster API, Terraform. Yeah, something like Terraform, Crossplane, maybe. An open source Kubernetes add-on that enables you to use Kubernetes style declarative APIs to manage cloud resources. I think maybe Crossplane does what I'm thinking of. I, this vaguely rings a bell. Do I have any plans with AI? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I would like to. I would like to look at the the uh, stable diffusion code base. I think that's a good idea. I don't have. I don't have it planned yet. Uh, but um, if that's an official request, um, I will add it to the. The, the fan request list. And then I'm going to get to a bunch of that stuff in the natural course of things. So I'm kind of weaving the fan requests, which I'm doing right now in roulette form in, and then also weaving in um, stuff like this, where it's being driven by, by not my needs for stuff that I'm building. So I do have AI stuff that I'm building. So it will, it will come up in the course of that, but I can also add it to the, um, to the, fan re request roulette thing, just in case, because I, I don't know how long it will be until I really need machine learning stuff. Uh, but that's a good question. I would also like to read, if if people have um, like self-hostable um, like LLMs that, especially ones you've used and, and you like, that you can suggest, that would be useful. Because I think that, uh, you know, I've, I've played around with stable diffusion on my own hardware. I haven't played around with any like text generating stuff. And from what I've seen, a lot of the like llama stuff needs um, m uh, more memory, I think, than I have, or, or is close to, you know, I'm close to capping out on that. So I don't, I just don't know the space of like what is um, kind of like self runnable in the AI world. But I would like to know more. And if folks know more, please let me know. Either leave a comment on the uh on the youtube videos or join the discord and and uh tell us about your experience so here's crossplane um build control planes without needing to write code code okay but what do you do Nine thousand slack members extensible by design but what is it but what do you do why control planes All right. I don't know. Something with ice cream. Popsicles. An open source project build the value, blah, blah, blah. Encapsulates policies, permissions, and other guardrails. How about can cross plane deploy, uh, create AWS VMs? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If you played around with crossplane or something like that, let me know. Um, um, you know, something something kind of like Terraform, but run from Kubernetes. That would be cool. All right, so that's it for me. I will be back tomorrow. I believe I'm looking at Flux, but uh, you might want to double check my uh, my schedule just in case. Um, so I'm looking this week at also at Flux and Tecton, which are two other projects that do that are similar in theory and scope to Argo. And so we'll see how they all work. And then at the end of this, I'll pick one that I think is going to be the least fussy and the simplest to start out with. So that's all for me. Thanks for watching.